New case. White female dumped in plain sight in the grass at the end of Hill Street. Hacks are all over it. Catherine's trying to fend them off. That sounds awfully similar. Set sail for adventure, Cole. You have a first class ticket to Los Angeles County Jail. In this game, you play as a good cap who have got in to a bunch of bad caps. But he never knew that the bad caps always win when the good caps are too busy being good. Because a good cap never knew what a bad cap always knows on the first day of a bad cap's life. That your good cap is a dead cap in L.A. Noir. And, uh, it's pretty good. But there's a lot of stupidity in this game, and it's short. Even though it's three discs. Uh, Grand Theft Auto is one disc, but a hundred hour game. And L.A. Noir is, uh, three discs, twenty hour game. Definitely, uh, there's a lack of content. But you know what the problem is? Is in Grand Theft Auto, you got all this stuff to do while you're free roaming. L.A. Noir has nothing to do. It has a wide open city, like, uh, Grand Theft Auto. But, nothing to do. No side missions. No, uh, you can't just go out on random killing sprees, because you're a cop and they don't let you shoot people. You can run them over sometimes. And, um, there's no multiplayer at all. Not that the multiplayer in Grand Theft Auto was great, but, uh, still it was there. Gave more replay value. I mean, people did play it for a while. What is Eleanor? It's a kickback to the old point-and-click games where you'd, like, on the PC where you'd, like, click around, move your guy, find clues on the ground, click on them. Except, uh, Eleanor has really simplified that and taken away a lot of the... The cl finding the clues is no fun at all. I mean, it's sim simply no fun. Because all you do is walk over to them and it makes a sound, a dramatic sound. And you can't really tell what's going to be a clue and what's not. So you have to go through like a ton of stuff that isn't clues. And uh, it's all retarded. It's really, uh, it's kind of gay. Clue finding is not the best. And it's a pretty big bulk of the game. There's also gay stuff like... Every two seconds, Cola has to call the department, talk to the secretary. And he goes, hey, this is secretary. Hi, Cole. Oh. And then he goes, oh, I, uh, do something gay for me, secretary. And then she goes, okay. And that's pretty gay. You know what's really good, though? These, uh, performances. The whole... The idea behind Eleanor is that they got this motion capture technology for people's faces. And the, the graphics in the game are gorgeous. Very, very good to look at. The interrogations. That's another big bulk of the game. The uh, they're kind of stupid, routine, to be honest. Because you got truth, Nines, lie, and doubt. Why are you lying and you, there's really no leniency in the system. Why it's not to say that... Point? They're no fun at all. They're just kind of ridiculous. Um, the, that's where the interrogations are, where the face capture technology really shines. You're supposed to be able to read your guy you're interrogating. Not like uh, it's possible at all. It really takes a whole playthrough of the game even to understand what kind of crazy crap Cole is going to do. Like, you say doubt, and you'll just, you just think he plays it cool, and he's like, okay, okay. I believe you, but in your mind you doubt it. Uh, but if you hit doubt, Cole will actually stand up and almost shoot the guy in the face. I mean, you'll go, hey, what kind of shoes do you wear? Uh, eights. You're a liar! You wear nines! And then, um, yeah, that was doubt. And then you don't want to know what happens if you press line. You got the evidence. He'll freaking just choke the guy and throw him out the window and murder him in the broad daylight. Uh, it's, it's kind of like playing as a psychopath. Interrogations, the thing is, you're either right or wrong. I mean, there's three options. There should be a middle ground, but there's not. You're either right or you're wrong. It's either truth, doubt, or a lie, and there's a piece of evidence to support it. And truth and doubt are almost luck. For those of you with a PS3 who played Heavy Rain, you're obviously going to be reminded of that. And, uh, Eleanor doesn't nearly have the dynamic story structure of Heavy Rain, where if you do something, 
it affects the story in a crazy way. And Eleanor, you either you find out about it and you go discover it, or you miss out on it. It's always something you miss out on. And in Heavy Rain, sometimes it would branch off. Heavy Rain was similar, but there would also be branching ways of stuff that you wouldn't see if you did it that way. Eleanor, you either do it the right way and you see more, or you do it the wrong way and you see less. The best part of the game is the the shooting, the gunplay, and the fighting. They upped the fighting system since Red Dead, and the shooting is really, really fun in this game. The shootouts are fun. There's, like, two of them. There's really no shooting at all compared to the way you're doing the most of the game, which is sad, because it's the best thing. Um... It's not an action game, really, at all. It has nothing to do with Red Dead and Grand Theft Auto. Well, Red Dead, you were freaking doing cows, but, uh... Yeah, there's a lot of detective work, and it does become monotonous, actually. It's better to take the game in doses. And if you want to get the uh, completionist five-star every mission, you're going to have to look through a guide, because doing it by yourself is trial and error going through the interrogations it is a narrative driven game and uh you know the story the isn't spectacular i mean there's half the game has nothing to do with anything the story doesn't really <clears throat> okay here's you got cases and then you got cutscenes in between and unfortunately the, the story often happens outside of the cases that you do a lot of the early cases have nothing to do with anything. I mean, it's, it's trying to paint this big picture of corruption in Los Angeles, but uh, it actually simplifies it a lot. And doing the early missions has nothing to do with anything. Towards the end of the game, you actually have a continuing storyline through the missions. And which I'll link up to something. You got these little newspapers scattered around. They give you a backstory. Which, uh... It's kind of... It's really a strange way of developing the story. You never... There's... Nobody has ever done it this way before. After every case, you see this flashback to World War II, which Cole served in. Um, really ham-fisted approach to how they tied that into the game. The music is really good in the game. that was... It was pretty cheesy and stupid. Um, the good parts, uh, the newspapers are actually probably the best cutscenes in the game. You got this one doctor guy, that guy's awesome. And, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, stop the video now, unless you want the ending ruined. Because, here's the ending, he gets killed by water. Motherfucker gets killed by water. Good one.